Where are we today? Let's see. We are on Unit 9, Layering Images. All right, in this unit, you'll make a single panel comic. In this lesson, you'll combine a background image and a foreground image. Goals for the lesson, combine a creature or person with a background image. This is going to seem really easy after doing project one for some of you. Comics are a kind of art that combines images and text to a story. Each section of a comic is called a panel. The very shortest comics are one panel. In this project, you'll combine a character image and a background image to create a single panel comic. Tool options are collections of tool-specific menus and buttons. These menus and buttons change depending on what tool you have selected in the toolbox. So these are the tools at the top and then your tool options are down at the bottom. Next, you'll explore the tool options for the Select by Color tool. Let's get GIMP open. Let's open GIMP together. Just a reminder where to find things. If you're not in single window mode, you go to Windows and you just click here, single window mode. If you are missing your layers panel, you'll go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and there are your layers there. If you are missing the tool options down in the bottom, you'll go to Dockable Dialogs Tool Options. And if you happen to be missing your tools, you'll go to Windows, New Toolbox. Okay. Now, you can also revert back to the default settings. So let's say yours just is not looking the way mine is and you want it to get back to the way it was. Go to Edit, Preferences. And you would go to Window Management and then Reset Saved Window Positions to Default Values. So you would click on that and go OK and then you'd need to close GIMP and open it back up. Okay, Click that, OK, close GIMP and then reopen it. So we're going to go ahead and open up a couple of the resources from the Unit 9 folder. So you'll go File, Open, and select from where you have put your image design folder. Mine is in my pictures. And I'm going to scroll down and find that. And here is the resources folder that I created with the resources that are unzipped. <laughs> I know we still have some students that haven't unzipped their resources. If you don't know about these resources, then you need to go back and do the orientation. There's an orientation folder and a video that shows you how not only to download, but you have to unzip the resources. If you have any issues with unzipping the resources, then call 866-K12-CARE for help. We're going to go into the Unit 9 folder and it says it wants us to open up a background image. So I am looking and I've got three background images it looks like to choose from. A desert, um, a nice plateau scene, um, a space scene. And then I have three subjects. So I've got a dog character, a little pug character. I've got a person giving a thumbs up and a guy lifting his boot up. So you're going to open up one of the background images. So I'm going to do the space one. Okay. And then you'll do the same thing. File open and you're going to open a character. So what do you want? Do you want a guy with the boot? Do you want the person with the thumbs up or the pug? I'm going with the pug. Pugs in space. 
okay so it said to go ahead and open them up as separate images rather than as multiple layers and I'm not sure what they have in store for us but we're gonna find out and, um, of course the gal in the video picks an image that has an all-white background which makes it super easy to select and what one did I open? I opened the one with the grass multicolor background. So we won't know if this is going to work out, but that's we're just going to go forward with it. So what we're going to do is, I believe we're going to click on layer and then transparency and add alpha channel. Okay. That's one way to do it. I also believe you can right click on the layer and you also have the option to add your alpha channel just by simply right clicking on it. Since we've already added it, it's not an option now because it already has one. Um, who knows what an alpha channel is? Let's read. Definition, what does alpha channel mean? The alpha channel is a color component that represents the degree of transparency or opacity of a color, that is, the red, green, and blue channels. It is used to determine how a pixel is rendered when blended with another. What is transparency, guys? Let's go to my favorite site, vocabulary.com, and let's look up transparency or just transparent, how about that? Transparent, you can see right through something transparent. A window is transparent, but so are the intentions of a peeping Tom looking through that window. Obviously the glass of a window is transparent, but transparency is also a way to describe something that is clearly understood and lacks any deception or secrecy. Reporters use it these days to describe the ideal way for government to develop policy where voters can see the process and how decisions are achieved. Some in government, however, would argue that the leaking of top secret information takes transparency a step too far. Now, what is opacity? Let's look up opacity. Opacity is the characteristic of being difficult to understand or unclear. So basically, if something is opaque, let's look up opaque. The adjective opaque is for something that doesn't allow light to pass through it, like a heavy curtain or for something difficult uh, to understand, okay? Opaque is a Latin word meaning dark, and that was its original sense in English, but it now means literally not transparent or metaphorically hard to understand and unclear. Some of his sentences are really opaque. It is used, it used to be spelled O-P-A-K-E, which made the pronunciation clear, but we then borrowed the more opaque French spelling, like my name, Giro, G-I-R-O-T, is pronounced Giro, not Girat, because it's French. Take a little French, it's a great language. Come to think of it, English spelling is often pretty opaque, which makes it hard for learners of the language to master. So, Transparency and opacity are opposites. The alpha channel is a color component that represents the degree of transparency or opacity of a color. When we add an alpha channel, let's go to the bottom. The alpha channel controls the transparency or opacity of a color. Its value can be represented as a real value, a percentage, or an integer, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think that's good enough for now. The point being that when we add an alpha channel to a layer, what we're saying is that if I take one of my selection tools and I go like that and I have to make, and I, and I hit delete, 
it is going to create a transparent hole. I can see through that hole, okay? Does that make sense? I can draw a little triangle over here, hit delete, and whatever's in that selection, I can see through it. It's transparent, okay? What happens if I right click on that and I remove the alpha channel? Ah, now I've got, because over here, your default background color is white, it's not transparent anymore, it is opaque. It is opaque, it is not able to be seen through. It has the default background color. I can change that, watch me hit this little arrow and flip it. Uh, that should have made the background black, but oh well, I'm not really sure all the details, but Nonetheless, let's let's flip it right now and see if I draw another one if that one's black. Hit delete. Yep, that time it turned black, okay? So think about the creative uh, ways you can use that knowledge, um, how you could get in there and change that color again if you wanted to, change the default background color and make a shape whoop, and hit delete and make it red, okay? Um, you could do uh, borders that way. So if I've got a rectangle that's selected the inside, how do I get the outside to be selected? Do you remember how to do that? You're going to go select, invert. Okay, when you invert a selection, that makes it so the outer edge of that selection is selected. You can see the marching ads going around the outside of the border and the rectangle. Let's go ahead and hit delete. Look, it made a red border. So those are just some creative ways that you can use those selection tools. And what happens if I add the alpha channel? Let's right click and add the alpha channel. Let's see what happens. Okay, so when I added the alpha channel, what I had done up to that point didn't change. But let's see what would happen right now if I were to take this selection tool and invert that, edit, sorry, select, invert, Okay, let's see, if I hit delete, what happens? Ah, that is transparent, I can see through it. If there's another image behind there, guess what, I'm gonna be able to see that. I'll show you that, watch. File, open, and I'm gonna go uh, to this space image, and um, yeah, let's just go ahead. I don't, I think that is not what I mean to do. Open as a layer open as a layer there we go if I open it it's just gonna create a brand new GIMP file for it so open it as a layer okay that layers on top what happens if I move it underneath we can use the arrow to arrow it down okay I've run out of I can't do anything I gotta hit save I, my my RAM is gone so file everybody save with me save as Okay, how do you name things? First and last name, not my first and last name, your first and last name. And we're gonna call this unit nine. I'm just gonna call it unit nine. And hit enter. Okay, now that I've got that saved, I should, there we go. I was able then to move that image down. What happens if your arrows and stuff aren't moving and working over here because of your RAM? Hit save, right? Or you can also just go right to the layer menu and under stack, it will let you raise layers and lower layers, okay? So you can do it from there. So as you can see, because of that alpha channel, any place I make a selection now, okay, and hit delete, and I'm not sure why that's not doing anything. I'm on the wrong layer. Look what happened. Thank you, this is so good. I was in the wrong layer. Look at that, it, it did exactly what I said to do, but because of the fact that we could see the layer on top, we couldn't see what it was doing underneath. Okay, this, this layer thing can get really confusing for you. So if you see something that's not working, check to make sure you're in the right layer. Okay, I wasn't, so what do I do? I just hit Control Z. Okay, and go back to Control Z, there we go. Now I can go back, I can hit Control Y and get that selection that I had back, but move to the other layer, okay? 
I'm going to try locking that layer and see if that will keep that from happening again. I've noticed that sometimes my locking is working and sometimes it's not though. Um, but theoretically, if I have a layer locked, I shouldn't be able to change it. But I'm going to be on uh, this top layer right here and I'm going to hit delete now. Uh, that time it worked, but am I really seeing the black? Yep, I am. I'm seeing that background. Um, let's try a different area. And I hope you guys are just kind of noodling around at home too. Hit delete. There, now I can see the planet in the background. So I know that it's working. I've got my alpha channel. It's transparent, okay? So hopefully you understand um, why you'd wanna have an alpha channel. So an alpha channel is if you're wanting to combine layers and you wanna be able to see through that top layer into the bottom layer. And you can add as many layers on top as you want. You just have to remember if you wanna see through them, you've gotta right click and add the alpha channel, okay? All right, perfect. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z several million times <laughs> and get back to where I was in the very beginning. Dun, 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 before I started noodling around. Perfect. And now I can go ahead and hit Save. Okay, so they want us to try out this Select by Color tool. I've I've never actually used it myself, so I'm excited to see how this goes when we have a multicolor background. So let's click on that tool, and they recommend that you have a threshold of 15. Now remember, with a selection tool like this, if it's selecting too much, you can decrease that threshold and it won't select as much. You can always hit Control Z and go back, okay? So I'm gonna hit Save to get my RAM free, and I'm just going to Make sure I'm in the right layer and click. Okay, so with a threshold of 15, um, it didn't select the entire background. Now, if I had been doing the white background like they did in the video, I could have clicked it one time and because there's only one color white in the background, um, of course, it would have selected the whole thing. So if that doesn't happen for you, what? Look at, and it's even got stuff selected. I don't know why they told us to select any of these images and then demonstrated a tool that's not gonna work. I'm sorry. <sighs> the nature of these K-12 lessons. That's why I do these tutorials with you. So let's, let's go ahead and um, just go in and open up the one that demonstrates when would be the correct time to use the select by color tool, okay? So let's go in there and let's grab the guy that's kicking because he has a white background. You could grab the girl with the thumbs up, okay? Grab anyone except for the pug, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna grab the guy kicking. Okay, we're gonna open him up. Don't have to be perfect because if you're like me, I learn by my mistakes. So I don't mind when something doesn't work correctly because that tells me, okay, so the time to use the select by color tool is when you have a background that is just one color. So <laughs> click your select by color tool, make sure your threshold's at 15, and then all you have to do is click. And it selects the entire white background. But we're not done, okay, because if you zoom in, Oops, I thought I was saving. Oh, let me see. Rachel Giroux, white background. Removal, oh, white background, color select tool, something like that. Um, just to distinguish this file from the others, click save. Okay, I've gotta always be able to save what I'm doing, otherwise I can't keep making my video. So if I zoom in, you'll notice that when you get up close, it's not, it, it looks, actually it looks pretty good. But let's take a look at what happens when we go into, I think it's select, anything having to do with selection. Select, grow, we're gonna grow the selection, okay? And we're gonna just grow it by one pixel. Let's watch and see what happens to the, to the edge of this. Okay, so it brought it in a little bit closer. It hugs it a little bit closer to the character so we don't have kind of that blurry edge there. Okay, and then we're going to just 
Okay, and then delete. Did, oh, this is a new one. We didn't do an alpha channel. So let's do an alpha channel. Right click on the layer, add an alpha channel. Okay, ready? Now hit delete. There we go. And we can zoom out. Do you remember what button to hold down when you have the zoom tool? Hold down control to zoom back out. Perfect. Okay, so it's a really nice, tight selection there. It's perfect. Oops, guess what? I am going to zoom in. Look at Oops, sometimes it happens. If that ever happens, go view, zoom, fit image and window. But look at what happened. There was a little piece of his face that was selected. So I'm going to hit control Z. How do I get rid of that? Remember to subtract, you, hit, you use control. But if to get rid of that, I'm going to have to use my lasso tool. Um, the lasso tool is also called free select here. So click on your free select lasso tool and hold down control and draw a circle around that and it'll take care of it, it'll get rid of it. Control means to subtract a selection. I'm gonna zoom back out, okay? Because I think there was another place where there was a selection that might not have belonged. Maybe in the hand, that looks like it belongs there. Let's zoom in and see for sure. What do you think? Should I grab my little tool? Let's grab, I'm gonna grab the uh, the fuzzy select tool because it's gonna select by color. And I'm gonna use uh, the control key to delete. I'm just holding down control and clicking, let's see. I'm gonna hold down shift and I think I'll add these more blurry. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that was good the way they had it. Okay, maybe that was perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit delete. Okay, boom, there we go. File, save. Gonna zoom back out, holding down control with my zoom tool, or I can go to view, zoom, fit image and window. Okay, so that looks great. Oh, look it up by his hair. Do you think by his hair that's perfect? Let's see, because I want you guys to learn how to be perfect. Because if you're going to go out into the world and you're going to be a graphic artist, you need to learn how to be very detail-oriented. Oh, I'm going to have to hold down Shift. There we go. That is going to subtract these colors. It will make a difference. You'll see. Yeah, especially over here, like there's not supposed to be, his hair shouldn't look gray, right? That part should just be transparent. He's a young kid, he doesn't have gray hair yet. So if it's looking white gray, you gotta get rid of that. And if you, do, if you accidentally hit a pixel that does that, just hit Control Z. Remember, you can always undo. Okay, so get through there, get all those little gray areas that shouldn't be gray. Sweet, and then you're just gonna go ahead and zoom back. I'm gonna go uh, view, zoom, fit image and window, and I'm going to hit delete again. Hit delete. And that should delete all of that stuff around his hair so it doesn't look like He's got gray hair, it's transparent. Okay, so now what you've got here is you have all of the transparent space selected. So I'm gonna invert the selection. I'm gonna go select invert. And then what I can do is I can just do copy, edit, copy, which is also control C. Okay, control copy. And then I'm gonna go over to that background image that I selected, right? And now you're going to go edit. And I like to do paste as a new layer. If you do paste,
it hasn't been saved. Hold on, I'm gonna save this uh, background. Save the background one with me. Uh, your first and last name, and you're going to save it as, um, let's say, Unit 9 Comic. How about that? Or just Comic will work. Your first and last name and Comic. Okay, hit enter. Okay, now I'm gonna try this again. Paste, nothing's happening. Fabulous. <laughs> so I'm going back to this other image. Edit, copy. I'm going to get my move tool and see if this makes a difference. Select the move tool and then copy and then go back over here and go edit paste. All right, it worked that time. So sometimes, um, I don't know if that was a RAM issue I was having or if it was the fact that I had the selection tool selected, I don't know, but when I clicked on the move tool, then it didn't mind copying it for me. So note to self. So if you just do edit paste, it's going to create a floating selection and you can right click on that and it gives you op options. You can paste that to a new layer. You could anchor that layer. I think that means put it onto the other layer, which you don't wanna do. So I would just do to new layer. And then when you do that, it just calls it the pasted layer. Now, you could have done the exact same thing. I'm gonna hit Control Z right now. You could have just gone edit, paste as new layer and it would have just, boom, created the layer for you right there, called it clipboard. If you want to name your layers, so I'm going to right click on that, or you could just double click on that layer, and um, if you right click, there's an option somewhere to rename it. <laughs> At least I think there is. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Is it edit layer attributes? Okay, edit layer attributes lets you name it. Probably the easiest way is just double click on it and then we can call this boot man or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and name your background layer, double click on that and uh, you can name that outer space or moonwalker or whatever. Okay, here's another note. Uh, if you want to do something more fun and whimsical, like you don't want to do just the boot man, if you want to do something fun, like um, go to Creative Commons, remember that, source www.creativecommons.org. This is where you get public domain images that are free for your use. Click on search the commons and maybe you want to do man on the moon. Make sure it says that you uh, want to modify, adapt, or build upon. This isn't for commercial purposes, so you don't need to have that box checked, but we are modifying it. Um, and then click on the Google images below and it will pull up Google images of the man on the moon. And so if you wanted to get a little more creative and do something cool like this, you could grab that and just go right click, copy image, okay? And come into GIMP and go edit, paste as new image, or you could just paste it as a new layer on top of the outer space one I know the instruction said that they didn't. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide the boot man, okay? And um, this image is huge, okay? So what I need to do is it's too big. I need to scale it down. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make sure I'm on that layer actually. And we need to scale it down. So this is the scale tool. You'll notice if you hover your cursor, there's the rotate tool. That's the move tool if you want to move it around. Um, so I'm going to scale it. And when I click that scale tool, it doesn't do anything. You have to click on the image that you want to scale. Make sure in the layer and make sure that this is linked. 
I don't know why it automatically has a broken link, but you want to link it because if I make any changes to the width or the height, I want to make sure that they make the same change so that it stays in proportion and doesn't get stretched. And there's not enough RAM. Okay, I got it to work. I'm going to hit scale. Okay, so now it's a little smaller. And I'm going to get my move tool and just kind of play around with it for a second and just see how small it is. It's a little bit bigger than my background. It's way bigger. So I'm going to scale it down some more and hit save. I'm going to make sure I'm in the right layer. I'm going to get that scale tool again. Okay, and my computer is running really hard on RAM right now. So click on that image and then I think I'll scale it down to another half of the size. So I'm going to go down to 300 and hit tab. When I hit tab, it automatically adjusts the height, and then I'm going to hit scale. Okay, now that's much better. Okay, so now that I have that, um, I'm going to move him, and the only way to move him is to grab the move tool. Okay, and then I'm going to slide him over here. So um, what I mostly want to do is just get him selected. So I'm going to zoom in, and this is where the other selection tools come in handy, like with the pug in that video. Um, if you want, or yeah, the pug file, if you wanted to do the pug, you could um, just by using the other selection tools that you have available to you, like the basic, just the simple, um, you could use the color select right now because there's some black here and you could just click on that black. Of course, it's selecting black in other areas that you don't want. So to get rid of that. That's where you get your lasso tool and hold down control and you just circle all that stuff that you don't want to get deleted. Okay, and there's a little piece right there. You're holding down to control to subtract that from your selection. Okay, I need to add an alpha channel, right, to this new layer. It looks like it already has an alpha channel. Look at it, it's checkered. It already has one if I go to select. There isn't even a possibility. It's already got an alpha channel. So if I hit delete, I can see through it. Now, I know you can't tell that I can see through it because of the fact that the background is already black, but let me just show you that it it is transparent because if I grab and move this, look, where I just hit delete, I can see the background picture behind, okay? So that's kind of what I'm going for and then um, hit control Z, get him moved back to the right position. I'm just gonna grab the lasso tool and I'm just gonna um, go select none, or yeah, select none, get rid of that other selection. And I'm just gonna draw um, the selection that I wanna delete. So I'm just going around the little space man. It's not perfect, it's okay. <laughs> it's just, just to demonstrate, you can always get more perfect than I can um, add more to that selection by holding down shift and just getting, whoops, and, and if it goes the wrong way, then just hold down control. And remember, you can always hit control Z to undo your selection move or several selection moves if you made a bunch of them that you decided that you didn't like. Okay, and now I can hit delete and that's gone. All right, and now I can go to the other side. I'm gonna go edit, or no, sorry, select none get rid of that selection and I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to lasso my way around this part of the suit. Get a big circle going all the way around that. Okay. And just hold down shift to add to it and control to subtract from it. So you can get close to the suit, hit delete and that's gone. Select none. Okay. Now you've got your transparent space, man. I'm going to go view zoom fit image in window now i don't know about you but that is really annoying that um the size of this the outline is showing okay so how do you get rid of that right click on that layer and say layer to image size okay layer to image size great now the boundary of that is is huge okay <sighs> that is gorgeous. Is that where you wanted him though? I might have made a mistake. <laughs> uh, 
I might have wanted to move him over here or something or over there. Uh, you know, like that rule of thirds and stuff. So maybe I didn't pick the best composition and now I've got that line again. I'm gonna hit Control Z and go back to where I was. Move this guy where I want him. I can't decide, what do you like? That could work, okay. Now go layer to image size, perfect. And maybe I am not liking how big this whole thing is and I'm gonna crop. So I'm gonna go file, save and grab my crop tool, drag around and um, then you can move these corners and get this cropped, you know, to the rule of thirds so that you've got your points of interest on your thirds line. Duh. <laughs> so that could work. What do you think? Do you like it cropped? Let's click inside. Okay, so that's the cropped version. That's the uncropped version. Cropped. Uncropped. Stylistic, you know, it's your interpretation. It's whatever you want. I'm not going to mark you off if you're like, but that's how I wanted it cropped. I like that. Okay, so whenever you're done noodling around, just click save. All right, in this lesson, you'll add a talk bubble to your comic and then add text to it. Add a talk bubble, write text for the talk bubble. Talk bubbles. A talk bubble is a shape used in comics to show that someone is speaking. The shape of a talk bubble can be used to add emphasis to the text inside it, suggesting the way in which a character might be speaking. You'll learn how to draw talk bubbles soon. Paths. A path is the outline of a shape. It can be anything from a line to a circle to a many-sided polygon. Paths can be filled with color. Specific parts of a path shape can be changed by moving its anchor points. A selected anchor point will display a direction line ending in squares. The squares or direction points can be dragged to change the curve or angle of a shape. Okay, so this next part is going to be very fun. We're going to use the ellipse select tool to create the little bubble. So go ahead and do that. Figure out where you want your bubble. And then we are going to be using the paths tool. Okay, so click on that paths tool. And the way to use this is we're just gonna, you know how the bubble has that little carrot that sticks out. We're just gonna click inside the bubble, click towards our character and click back inside the bubble. And I think we can click and drag this and move that around. So we can move those around once they're in there. If you uh, want to adjust that, you can. You could do it coming from this angle over here if you wanted to. Think kind of like that. However you want to do it, uh, just get that adjusted. Now, once you have that, we need to add it to the selection, okay? So to do that, click over here on the Paths menu. I need to click Save and um, click on that Paths menu. That should be up there with your Layers, Channels, and all of that. If you can't find it there, remember it's in your Dockable Dialogs right there. You can pull it up, okay? Right-click on that layer and, well, let's name it. Let's call that our, I'm gonna call it the Callout Carrot. <laughs> and um, right click once you've got it named and it's going to need to be added to that selection so we're adding that little carrot to the selection okay now that it is a part of that selection we're going to choose a color to fill it with so grab your fill bucket your bucket fill tool and decide what foreground color you want. I think I'm just gonna do mine white, but if you wanted to change yours, you could just click on that 
and select any color. Remember, you do have that dropper tool. That is so cool. If you grabbed your dropper tool, you could pick a color from planet Earth in the background to select um, and click OK. And let's go back to our layers and let's try to figure out why that didn't fill. Ah, because now that I have picked the color, now I have to actually click inside the selection there. So I could pick a color from the picture somewhere, um, or if you're like me, you're kind of boring and you just want a white <laughs> color. So um, to get white, you just go all the way down to that bottom corner that's white and click OK. Or you can also get right back to your default black and white by clicking on this right here and then you'll have to switch it so that the white is in the foreground and the black is in the background again and then just click and that'll fill it with white very good very good the text tool lets you add text to an image when you add text with the text tool a new layer is created you can also use it to select and edit text you've already typed. Next, you'll use the text tool to add text to your talk bubble. Okay, so I'm going to click Save to free my RAM. And the text tool is the, the letter A. And if you hover your cursor, you can see it says text tool. So click there. Now, the text tools uh, can be a little tricky because different graphics programs behave and have different expectations. But I I believe, and you'll have to play around with this, that I just click where I want to add text, and then I start typing. And I'm going to type, I miss GIMP. OK, what's going on? How come I can't see my letters? Do you know why I can't see my letters? Look at my foreground color. Every time I use a tool, what color is it defaulting to? It's defaulting to my foreground color. So I just typed in white. I'm going to hit the backspace and just go back to the beginning. And I'm going to flip this so that I have black there now. And I'm going to type, I miss camp. And guess what? That didn't matter. I'm going to hit Control Z. I'm just going to undo this text. I'll try and click on it and hit delete. <laughs> it just like doesn't, it just doesn't even want to do anything for me right now because my RAM is going crazy. Text on me making a video, not, not my favorite. So get your move tool. You can click on it to select it and hopefully delete it. Or you know what? I'm going to go over here and just delete this layer because it creates a new text layer. So I'm deleting that layer. All right. I'm going to start from fresh, this time with black in my foreground as my color. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to use my dropper tool. I'm going to get this awesome blue color. Mm -hmm. That's really pretty. Or I could do the red. The red would stand out too. I'm going to start with blue and see if I like that. Now I'm going to grab my text tool. And what did I say? I miss earth. There we go. There's my message. I miss Earth. Okay. When I'm done with that, uh, grab your move tool because then, whoops, I'm moving the wrong thing. I'm going to try to move is a little funky. Okay. I'm trying to lock the other things and make sure it doesn't move them, but it, it the move tool will pretty much move whatever. So hit Control Z if it moves the wrong thing. Hit save. Maybe if what I do sometimes is uh, if I can't get my move tool, if it keeps moving the wrong thing, I will just click one time on the thing I want to move and use the arrows and I trick it. <laughs> if you hold down shift and move the arrows, it makes it move bigger increments, larger increments. Okay. Um, and just the arrow itself makes it move in really small increments so you can be precise. So let's say I got that done and I'm thinking I'd actually like it to be a lot bigger. I want to edit it. So to edit it, you'll have to click 
on the text tool itself. There might be a text editor in this program. I'm going to click on that. Maybe not. So I'm going to try to highlight it and see if I can increase the size. There's a little dialog box here. And yep, sure enough, it will do that. And I can also make it bold. Um, I don't know if it's going to let me just because of you can um, there's like justification there's left justified center right justified you've got those options there's a lot of different options in here that you can play around with uh, there are different fonts so you can click on this box right here and pick a different font which is nice it kind of gives you a preview of what it looks like, so that's cool. So pick a font that you like. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> no, Arial Unicode didn't do anything. All right, I'll go with that one, and then maybe I'll make it a little bigger. Okay. So I am going to click my Move tool now so that I'm not in that text tool anymore and I'm going to use my arrows, click on it and use my arrows to move it where I want it. Okay, there it is. I miss earth. Um, click on a different layer so that you don't have that little outline. There we go. And you can also get rid of this selection. You see, you still have marching ants. When you go to publish your work and submit it to me, you want to make sure that you don't have any marching ants on your image. So go to select none to get rid of all your marching ants. Typography, font types. The shape of the words in a comic can say just as much as the words themselves. Font types are groups of fonts that share the same basic shape. Explore some of the different font types you learn what they're used for next. So he, these are serif fonts, okay? Serifs are the hooks at the ends of some letters. So do you see these little hooks that you have there? They're just little, you know, they make it look fancy. Okay, that's called serif. Now these are sans serif fonts. Sans serif is French. Sans means without. Sans. So it means without serif, without those hooks. So these are just letters that end in just pure straight lines. They don't have any of those fancy calligraphy hooks. Okay? These are script fonts. Script fonts usually look like cursive writing. These are handwritten fonts. Handwritten fonts usually look like block or cursive letters written out by hand. And these are styled fonts. Styled fonts are heavily decorated. And these are symbols fonts. Symbols fonts don't use letters but tiny images. Typography, font usage. The font you use can add a lot to what you're trying to say. Explore how you might use different font types. So serif fonts are very common. Those are the ones with the little doodads on the edge, the little hooks. They're often used for long sections of text, like in books, magazines, and newspapers. Serif fonts are easier to read on paper. Sans serif, or without the hooks, fonts are very common. Sans serif fonts work well on street signs, computer screens, and things seen from a distance. Script fonts are usually used for small sections of text because they can be hard to read. Script fonts are used to add an elegant touch, like on printed invitations, greeting cards, and posters. Handwritten fonts are usually used for small sections of text on things like book covers, posters, and comics. 
They can be used to suggest a quirky, whimsical, or carefree attitude. Styled fonts aren't used often, but you'll sometimes see them on posters and on shop signs. They're usually used for creating company logos. Simple fonts are non-alphabetical. Sometimes they're used to add emphasis to text or for decoration, like on the borders of stationery. They can also be used to add arrows, bullets, or other objects. Okay, so with that, it looks like um, we can actually edit the text pretty quickly. So I'm just making sure I'm in my text layer and I've got my text tool selected. Okay, and it puts, um, it should put a little box around it or let's just click on it. There you go. I think I probably, I'm not sure if I have to select the whole thing or not. I'm about to find out with you. But let's see what happens if I try to change my text. If it does anything it did cool so I didn't have to worry about selecting the whole thing I'm going back to my original because I really liked the Bauhaus 93 it was very much my style and um, you can change the size from here as well if you're uh... ah, might have to pause my video to get mine to take effect my size isn't working, but it's probably just because I'm making a video, so I'm not going to, I'm just taking that with a grain of salt. Um, it does say that you should be able to change the color here as well, but I have a feeling that for me, it's just not working because of the fact that I'm making a video. I was able to get the, the color to change. I'm just not able to get the size to work for me, but it should work for you. Remember, if you don't like changes that you've made, you can always just go Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, and get it back to the way that you wanted it. And click on that Move tool just to be done with the text tool so you don't accidentally click somewhere and create more text and um, click on a different layer so you're not seeing the little text box as well. Justification is the direction that a section of text aligns. You can align or justify text to the left, right, center, or you can make it so that it fills the whole space. Build justification is used for paragraphs or large blocks of text to make them square. So here's left justified, right justified, center, and filled. Okay. So let's play around with the justification. So what we should be able to do is just take our cursor and <laughs> we got to get the text tool. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to go off of that layer. I'm going to grab the text tool and I'm just going to click on it. Yeah, when I watch the video, it works. Okay, so now I have it clicked on. Um, my issue, I think, is that I've got my entire, like, text box full. What happens if I stretch this? Then you'll be able to see a little better when I change uh, my justification. So I'm not sure if they're going to work for me. Um, but I've, I'm at left justified right now. I'm going to click it to center. Nope, that changed it to right. So it's not like on your Word document. It's got right next. And then it has center justified next and then it has fill justified which for me didn't do anything but move it over to the left and I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze mine back because I, I guess I just I liked mine nice and cozy like that um, but if you want to change your justification go ahead and do that now Okay, so we're pretty much wrapping it up. I'm going to my move tool. I'm gonna um, actually make it so we can see the, the guy kicking too. And um, I'm gonna go to the, the boot man layer. I'm gonna just click on him and hold down shift and use my arrows to move him over. And I think I might go ahead and decrease the size of him. So grab my scale tool here. And um, I'm just gonna click on him. And then they say you can grab this bullseye, but that doesn't scale it for me. That didn't work for me. I always have to grab the edges to get it to scale down. Remember to make sure that you have that locked. If you didn't, then it probably skewed it. 
just hit control Z and go back and start all over. So get him the size that you want him. Hit scale. Yeah, his forehead's um, kind of got to be at the top of that picture. Otherwise, he just doesn't look right, does he? <laughs> so for that reason, I'm just going to... I'm going to delete this layer because I don't need it. <laughs> all right, I'm good like that. I think I am going to crop it a little bit more, though, because I don't like the way I have all this negative space out here. It's not contributing to my image. So I'm going to go File, Save, Crop, and I'm just going to, you know, get rid of a little bit of that space out there that just makes my moon man feel like he's, too lost in space for my taste. I kind of like a tight composition. There's control Y to click on the move tool. Control Y <laughs> or try edit, undo crop there. That'll work. Edit, redo crop. I might have cropped it too much. You know, there's a balance. Boy, my phone is really getting on my nerves. <laughs> So maybe I don't want to take off quite so much of the edge, but I want to take off some of it. There. I like that. I'm going to click Save on that, and that's what I'm going to be submitting. But I also need to export the image. And remember, I don't want those dotted lines on there, so click off of that text layer, okay? Click off the text layer. Um, and we're going to go File, Export As. And it's going to export it the same thing, except you want to get rid of ping. Backspace and type JPG for JPEG. It's got to say .jpg or go down to the little plus where it says select file type and scroll down to JPEG manually. If you click there, that'll automatically set it up the way you want it. Before you hit export, Slide this over so you can see your image. Now click export and comes the file optimization box. And you want to show preview in the image window. And it's telling me that it's at 62 kilobytes. It's super tiny. So I'm going to increase the quality to 100%. That still only brings it to 134 kilobytes. Remember, the goal is to have it around 500 or less. And um, that way we have lots of good quality. Um, it's really small, so bump that up to 100% quality. Or wherever it needs to be so that you're at 500 kilobytes or less. But don't make it super small, because then it shows up really small on the screen when we go to enlarge it. We don't see the quality, okay? Then click Export. Ta-da! And now, we just need to submit it. So go into the content. Find the unit nine layering images and click on that drop box right there. All right, and you are going to see an upload button here. You'll upload look for your image design folder and mine automatically saved into the resources unit nine and you are going to be submitting the first and last name unit nine comic you can hit, hit that one and hold control and select your first and last name unit nine comic jpeg so you've got your jpeg and your .xcf to see those file extensions, remember you can go to view and you can change it to um, seeing the icons. You can change uh, so that you see the file extensions. You really want to make sure that you can see the file extension. So that's under view. Okay, so when you hold down control, it lets you select more than one uh, file at a time and then you just go ahead and upload those. And then once you have them uploaded, you'll have to click Submit as well. Remember, after uploading, to click Submit. Thanks so much. Have a great day.